pop 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 my, I'm going to test my metal on this episode of Pass the Popcorn, otherwise known as Pass the, Pass the, Pop, Pop, um, as, as Rob said on the last week's episode. Um, speaking of, uh, I have here with me the, what the, uh, film school dropout, Rob Jarosinski. Hi, Rob. Hello. I have the casual movie, go- blah, 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 Carrie Jarosinski. How are you? Good. I also have the critic in residence, Mr. Timothy Brayton. Welcome, Timothy. Thank you very much for having me, Brendan. You're welcome. I have, uh, as uh, Tim and I do Bride of Alternate Ending together, and I have proven consistently that I cannot introduce Tim without my brain completely melting down. Um, and it's always different and it's always wrong. So, See, I, I always do the bit where you introduce me and then I act like you and I have never interacted and I'm just a random guest on your Sunday morning news show. It's sort of how mentally I approach those moments. Mm-hmm. And, and that always puts me in the exact right headspace to be doing the show. <laughs> Um, anyway, if you did not catch last week's episode, the joke I just made a couple minutes ago is not going to make any sense. Listen to that one. But also, Rob did announce that I'm going to be kind of taking over as the, you know, cat corraler in chief of Pass the Popcorn. All of your AE faves are still going to be on the show, but it might be a little more of a rotating panel show depending on schedules. Um, but we have some additional potential panelists. If you are a reader of the site, as you should be, um, you will know that we debuted a whole bunch of new writers for Alternate Ending, including Mandy Albert, who's here with us today. Hi, Mandy. Howdy. And Chris Trengove. Hi, Chris. I cannot hear Chris. Hi, Brennan. Sorry about that. Thanks for having me. (laughs) You're welcome. (laughs) This is is why we don't meet Zoom calls. Building tension. That's what he was doing. Exactly. No, it, it, that, that was the drum roll. Um, it was the it was the calm before the storm. Um, anyway, also, you may- what is what is this potential business? Are we auditioning here? <laughs> should I have prepared a monologue? Uh, I mean, you should always have prepared a monologue. Um, but anyway, so I mean, you just got to have one in your back pocket in case you you know run into a producer in the bathroom or something. Um, it is the Oscars. You always have to have a speech prepared, right? That's exactly. That's the, that's the do you though? Nobody actually likes them. Also, that's true. The best speeches are the ones where they're just like, "Holy shit, what the fuck!" <laughs> but how much of that is part of the speech where they say where they've already said like? Then th- th- there's no expectation that lowers the expectations a hundred percent. Then that's true. But who has expectations for an Oscar speech to be really you know chewy and good? Some people really dig that. That's like their favorite part of the thing. And I, I there's. There are speeches I like, but for the most part, especially the acting wins, I think tend to be very like indulgent and droning. I mean, that, that's the Oscars. That's indulgent well, that's, and droning. That's a good point. Yes. Very good. Very true. So that's completely fair. But in case you hadn't gathered, we are here to discuss the Oscars. Um, Mandy, Chris, and Tim uh, submitted their Oscar predictions. Um, so we might go through some of that. Actually, let's let we can let's cover the main data really quick of like where we ended up. Um, so we had Mandy trying to predict the top eight nominations for the Oscars and Chris and Tim. You were trying. Look, Mandy, um, you went with your heart and I think that's more important (laughs) than being. Well, I will explain my methodology when you asked me to, and it had nothing to do with my heart. Okay. I mean, Um, you, you were predicting a world where the tragedy of Macbeth was a film that people loved and wanted to give awards to. So whatever you were doing, I want to be like that. Mandy had the tender bar on her list. She was, (gasps) she was advocating for Carrie. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Wait, you had that on there for best, for uh, best movie for best picture. I did the category best movie. And Mandy, (laughs) Mandy should for for sure win. That that was a solid, but I need to clarify. It's not because I liked the tender bar. (laughs) <laughs> because I have not, in fact, seen the tender bar. Mm-hmm. Good. Good. I can sell. No, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't mean to solely your name in such a way. Um, but no, I think that have 
being able to predict the Oscars is a thoroughly useless skill. Um, to which point I will say congratulations to Tim and Chris. <laughs> um, yeah. You both did incredible. Uh, Tim, mm. you know, Tim boosted his number a little bit, um, but Tim's at 85 and Chris is at 86. So they are neck and neck. And, That's pretty close. And, yeah, it's pretty close. And I thank you for the compliment, Brennan. I, I would say personally, as someone who's been following the Oscar prognosticators for a while now, uh, if you want to really impress people, I think you need to at least break 80% and, and neither of us did. Okay. Um, we're, both, we're both around 71. Chris is a little lower. I'm a little under. That's totally fair. Um, but I did come closer to 80% than you, Tim, true. just by. I'm, I'm just saying ni- neither one of us is going to replace uh, Ann Thompson. Is, is all I'm no. Saying. That's, no. That's fine. But here's the thing. For me, following a bunch of Oscar prognostications, feel it doesn't feel very sporting to me. It, it, that kind of saps the fun out of it for me. Like I like. I, I don't like, well, that one's obviously slated to win because all of the BAFTAs are this and all this like that. I find that really boring because then when that person wins the Oscar, it's like, well, we knew this. And I'm like, I don't, I, that's not fun. So, Brennan, <laughs> in that case, would you like to, to hear my much more exciting scientific methodology for how I yes. put together my lists? So, I used three primary strategies. The first one was that I put together a list of all of the movies released in 2021 that Tim gave between two and three and a half stars. (laughs) (laughs) Good start. The second was that I looked at movies that Variety and The Hollywood Reporter raved about. Uh And the third was that I asked my mother-in-law. Which this right. year that she liked and it turned out that i should have listened more to my mother-in-law mm-hmm. because if i had gone with everything she told me to put on my list i would have gotten at least four more things right <laughs> look mother-in-law is the most middle brow type of person to be i mean my mother-in-law is awesome but her taste is in fact much closer to the oscars than mine is oh I, yeah i say this with all love rob is my mother-in-law for predicting the oscars <laughs> that's adorable <laughs> Um, yeah, I, 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 you're, you keep uh, elevating um, Chris and, and Tim here with their scores. Carrie and I were a perfect 100. percent I don't know what you're talking about. Oh yeah, that's right. Because there's no evidence of any guesses you made, so we can just go for it and say that. Well, well, because we're zero for zero. So wait, dang it! I that think that work. equals zero percent. Yeah, you can't you can't divide by zero, so you cannot I'll, calculate zero. zero. It's infinity, Tim. Is what that? That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> I just and, myself to do this. Like we do the predictions and I'm like, that one feels like I at least have a sporting chance. Well, because you're, you're narrowing an existing list versus like drawing from the ether of right, space and time. Right. And my list, I can guarantee you would have lo- looked a lot different for best picture than this for sure. And none of the movies I would have picked would have been. <laughs> <laughs> and, and look, I don't, I don't mean to be so down on the Oscars. I was more just poking fun at Tim and Chris was the collateral damage. So I apologize, Chris. You are the winner. So congratulations. congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be looking for my check in the mail. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. We, we, please don't give a speech. Um, we, we're we're going to get enough of those in March. Um, but yes. So I actually think that this segues into something that I want to hear from everybody, which is like, essentially, what is your philosophy on the Oscars? Like what, what is, like other than like you know a, a betting game, like how do you feel about them? Like what do they mean to you? Like for example, for me, uh, I don't really put stock into oh that one best picture. I need to see it because usually I don't like that movie. Um, for me, I feel like I am rooting for the Oscars to pick the right movie, and when they do, I'm proud of them. Um, but I don't think that the Oscar is necessarily going to the best thing. Um, let's see. Mandy, you were nodding a little bit. Do you feel similarly? Uh, Similarly, the one thing that I would add on is that the Oscars are very important to me after they happen because I have to memorize all of them for trivia purposes. Mm. Got it. Uh, Tim, what about you? Um, So I also have to memorize them for trivia purposes. So I I completely respect that position. Uh, My, I have a two pronged philosophy with the Oscars. Um, old things that won the Oscar. So the like, let's look at the big list of what won, what was every single nominee for best art direction throughout history. And let's, let's watch as many of them as I can lay hands on. Uh, I think there is something interesting about 
the the history of Oscar nominations is the history of Hollywood telling its story about itself in a way. I think Ooh. it is the this is what they thought in 1947. What Hollywood wanted you to believe was the sort of pinnacle of the film medium. And it's it's generally not. It's very rarely the case that the Oscar movies are also like the best movies. And that's true in all categories, not just best picture. But um, I, I find it interesting to think about sort of as cult- cultural archaeology, what did they think was like important? What typified good production design or typified good sound recording to to the people who were in the industry in 1947? And that's interesting to me. The contemporary stuff, why do I follow the Oscars now? Why do I, you know, predict and all this stuff? Um, Mm -hmm. Basically, if I liked baseball, I would be the guy who has everybody's RBI written down and I would have like six books on sabermetrics. Mm -hmm. I don't like baseball. I like movies. So this is the closest movies get to that. I 100% I'm on board with you on that as well. Um, Chris, what about you? Yeah, I think that baseball analogy is really sound and I do like baseball. So I think that checks out, but uh, I like movies a lot too. And it's, it's important to just follow, I think the checklist of, of who is being acknowledged in each year. And as I mentioned in my blog post that I do have a love hate relationship with the Oscars. I mean, it's, it's like I said, when they, uh, when they nominate the movies I like, that's when I get really jazzed. Uh, uh, Rob. Um, as uh, the self-proclaimed because Sting called you this, the, you know, the human I am to be top 250. How do you feel about the Oscars? How do they tie in with your uh, your lifestyle? Let's let's continue the baseball metaphor while everybody's, you know, calculating RBIs and stats. I'm I'm uh, in the bleachers trying to get autographs from the people. I'm there for the pomp and the circumstance. Like it's mm. the it's it's the seeing all the beautiful people in one room and. I yeah. appreciate your honesty. It's embarrassing, yeah, I'm just, I'm just but gonna, I appreciate it. Yeah, I might as well <laughs> might as well be honest. And I'm always looking for the story. You know, if I, I do want some controversy, uh, yeah, I'm 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 looking for spectacle, good TV. Um, so that's what I'm interested in. I I don't think I use it as a rubric for the best film. Like as with the IMDb top two fifty person, um, I'm not I'm not letting the outcome of that inform what I view to be the best movie. Um, I think I did in my younger years before I, I became slightly more sophisticated and realized the Oscars wasn't um, the Super Bowl of, gosh, these sports metaphors, um, the, the Super Bowl of, of movies. So yeah, they're not, they're not going head to head and it's, it's a fair fight to see who's, who, who comes out on top as the best film. Mm-hmm. It's a flawed system. No, of course. And, but I think the sports metaphor is super apt because the Oscars are, you know, that big, like climactic sports game of the movie loving world. Um, But also, yeah, the, the, the pomp and circumstance is also very fun. You know, it's very self-indulgent, but that's, that's fun to do for three hours a year, you know? Um, Three and also and a half, four. Um, <laughs> yeah. What, what's, what's five extra hours between friends? Um, but yeah, and also like looking for controversy. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people were really mad about the whole um, La La Land Moonlight Best Picture debacle, but that's good fucking television. Oh, it was such good television. Mm-hmm. That was one of the greatest moments in Academy history. Yeah, uh, just a pure delight. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but yeah uh, Carrie, how about you? I was hoping you were going to forget about me. <laughs> oh, I, I can if you want me to. <laughs> I just, I have such a different perspective. <laughs> and now I feel That's very important. No, <laughs> don't feel bad about your perspective until we hear it. And then we'll decide <laughs> <laughs> how bad it is. But I, I mean, for me, it's always, it is a list of movies that I'm like, oh, shoot, I should go see that if I missed it, if it made it on there. Um, and then the way I always look at it is like, generally, it's like one of two things happens. One is, there's a movie that I love that's super contentious. And then Tim writes about it. <laughs> and then I and like, maybe I'm swayed. Like, maybe I'm like, oh, yes, I am a bad person for having liked that movie. And I can like walk myself back. I'm not always swayed. Like no one's still I'm going to say this quietly. No one has swayed, swayed me on Green Book yet. But anyway, I'm just going <laughs> to throw that out there. Um, but I haven't read your review fully on that one. But uh, but then on the flip side, I also feel like there's sometimes this space where great movies converge and it's a movie that you guys would like and it's one that i would like so i feel like i loved the favorite as an example in past years and then it's like well something really cool is happening there where a movie that 
all of us can enjoy. And maybe it's for different reasons, but I kind of do look at it as a list of things that I should see. So just not this year. Not this year. Well, <laughs> for this year. Well, and and Carrie, that's totally okay. I I think you are unfairly maligned on the Discord for your tastes in films. Like I will step up and say I fully defend like Carrie's approach to cinema. Um, in that everybody is looking for something different from a film, and the things that you want from a film are completely valid and not a a bad thing to want. The hug, I mean- warm hug. That's what I want. <laughs> have you not seen the comments on the discord though about how carrie is the reason everybody listens to the podcast that is like, true. Everybody, like like everybody makes fun of carrie because honestly it's it's funny but um but at the same time like anytime carrie comes on and starts bad mouthing herself about uh, about like not knowing as much as tim and rob and all that jazz everybody will immediately chime in very sincerely about uh-huh. how carrie is like the lifeblood of the podcast I'm very red right now uh, but thank you <laughs> Carrie, I've mentioned this to you. Your your Sean Connery con man piece <laughs> is one of my favorite things in human history. It's like the, the problem with that, though, is I'd like to say that it was planned. <laughs> <laughs> so say that there are. And so, <laughs> so that, which just makes it more embarrassing. It'd be better if I could say it was a plan. Mm-hmm. But it just it really never is. <laughs> but thank you. But thank you. But yeah, I mean, I, I like the mainstream. Again, I'm excited to talk about this year's because I do actually feel like I see movies on this list that Tim and others rated higher than I did. So it'll be an interesting mm-hmm. conversation to go through. Yeah. And let's get started. down through all the other categories we've got. It's a huge slate this year. Um, Belfast. Coda, Don't Look Up, Drive My Car, Dune, I'm getting bored just saying these, King Richard, <laughs> Licorice Pizza, Nightmare Alley, Power of the Dog, and West Side Story. So let, let me shake it up. Let's, let's start with you, Carrie. So like, how are you feeling about this slate? Is there anything you feel like is missing or are you excited about any of the titles that were picked? I mean, I don't see the Friends reunion on here, number one. Um, but I... The thing that's so upsetting about this whole list is like, I just think it must have been a bad year for me because Mm -hmm. the only one that's on here that I really liked or that I saw and liked was Coda. And I am 100% aware that that is not a Oscar winning movie by any stretch. So I feel to be fair, you've seen 50% of these. I saw I I saw more than 50%. Don't, why'd you have 50, to throw it it's out there? It's 50%. <laughs> I, I can, I speak with, but I can tell you, I'm not going to like drive my car. I'm not going to like drive. Oh, you're my breaking car. Chris's heart. I <laughs> mean, is that like baby driver kind of? No, <laughs> it's not like yes. baby driver. It's exactly <laughs> like baby driver. Really <laughs> like a baby driver. In that somebody drives a car. Yes. See, I'm not going to like that. I can tell you right now. And Dune was just so sober me. Like I was like, yeah, it's good. It's a lot of, I liked the sand, but like, I don't even remember what happened. King Rich, I had, I had mentally overwritten that you liked Power of the Dog and and it was Rob who did and you did not. So I take that back. It was, was okay. It. it was I like, was you know, load. It. it was fine. I don't know. West Side Story, also fine. I don't know. So I just feel like what could win? Like, what are they going to pick? And I don't know. And that that's totally fair. Also, um, did, did you uh, do you have a list? Of, I mean, do you have the number of how many Oscar nominated feature films you've seen? It feels like I should, doesn't it? Yeah, but no, uh, I will. That's though. okay. Well, let's go to Rob because Rob, you're the one who asked us to bring this number. Do you have a number? Yes. Uh, okay. Yes, it is inclusive of all of the feature related things like costume design and 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 everything. Uh, if we're just going off of best picture, I'm six for ten. So I have some, I have some work to do. Um, movies that I think I will like. Um, I think Carrie, I think King Richard's going to give you that warm blanket feeling. I have, that's my, that's my, that's my feeling on that. It's Will Smith, um, dad, Venus, Serena Williams, you oh, know, like tennis. Really? Yes. You're going to love that. Famously nice guy. Yes. Gosh, that you're gonna, sounds you're so gonna good. That. You're going to love Belfast. Am I, what's Belfast about? Uh, coming Ireland. story in Ireland, black and white, Kenneth Branagh. Pick. Oh. It's Kenneth Branagh saw Roma and was like, what if these were white people? <laughs> <laughs> which which arguably was one of the criticisms people had about Roma to begin with. So mm-hmm. yeah, okay. no, that's totally fair. <laughs> and for me, like, I think I'll enjoy those movies, but I think I've, I've seen what I need to see. I, oh, so I don't want to disparage drive my car. I've not seen it. I don't know if it's going to be for me based on um, 
<laughs> Chris are are sometimes like uh, countering uh, views on on things. So I'm not sure if it's going to be up there for me. I'm curious what happens when I see that one. But um, Power of the Dog uh, is the one I was really hoping to see on the list, and it's there, so I'm I'm satisfied. You are a dog lover, famously. <laughs> I have not seen Power of the Dog. Is that showing? It's on Netflix. I'm aware. Oh, I, it's not an accident, but I haven't seen Power of the Dog. <laughs> I don't know if you'll like it. Do you think, Brennan, or uh, whatever your name is, Tim, what uh, do you feel like it? <laughs> I mean, let's put it this way Power of the Dog is a movie that when I watched it, uh, and, and I agree with a point Chris made earlier, I don't go into the Oscars hoping to see the movie that I loved win. Like it, when it happens, it's nice. And this year it's nice because Power of the Dog, I kind of did a like preliminary what I think is going to win. I think Power of the Dog is going to kind of run the boards in a lot of categories. And that's great because I, I felt when I saw Power of the Dog, um, it was one of those, oh, thank God, there's still people who know how to make movies. Like the medium thrives and lives, even if it's in this one corner. And, and it was like spiritually nourishing for me and, and felt very like... It was one of those makes me remember why I love movies sort of movies. So no, I don't think Brendan's going to like it at all. Yeah, exactly. Like I, I don't like liking things or, well, no, I, I just, I, this is a problem with me inside my soul. Um, I have an allergy to a lot of prestige the, things. The, the thing is that what I want movies to be and what you want movies to be, Brennan are non overlapping circles. And That's true, diagram. because I, I actually I've been kind of nailing this down as we discuss movies on Bride of Alternate Ending, which has been really edifying to me because, um, Tim, you prefer form over function. And that's been like your primary. That's been my thing. Yeah, that's been your thing forever. I like form to to be good and supportive of function. And that's a completely different thing. Yes. To be fair to uh, power of the dog, it has both. Agreed. Well, but the thing is. The I also just, I, I know you just don't like art house cinema and it is. Well, the thing, I, I mean, it, it just depends. I have to, I have to have an entree into it. And usually the entree is if there's gay shit. And I know there's gay shit in the power of the dog, but you, I don't think it's see, the type you of. You see a little Benedict. No, you do. <laughs> you do. You do for a few frames. You see, uh, you see his Cumberbatch. Oh, Benedict. <laughs> when? Like midway? Or in, in the bath, in the, in the bathing in the river scene, uh, there's a side profile and there's a little. A little bit of something that's not a shadow and not as like. I looked. Oh, gosh. He didn't look close um, enough. But but ultimately, the type of gay shit that the Oscars like tends to not be the type of gay shit that I like. Um. So I just I've been very trepidatious. That 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 is one that I that is on my maybe pile to check out before the Oscars because I want to have an opinion on when it wins a million things. Um. But that that's just me. Um. Tim, do you have? anything to add about the just general slate of what we're looking at here? Um, I mean, I think it is, it's a little feast or famine, like power of the dog getting 12 nominations and almost certainly going to end up as the win leader. Uh, if it's not the win leader, Dune will be the, the win leader. And I actually thought Dune was like all the things I want big budget popcorn filmmaking to be. So basically the, the prospect of a Dune and power of the dog heavy Oscar night is like super great. And I think I'm going to be really pleased by the winning list uh the nominees there's a lot once you get like the great stuff at the top of the the heap it starts to it starts to trickle off pretty hard pretty fast for me like the the lower reaches of best picture are worse than the upper reaches are good i would say and lower reaches being i know you didn't like coda what else is living there uh king richard which i think is just unbelievably dull uh biopic filmmaking i could not find any way into licorice pizza it it mm. was just like watching somebody mixing a bucket of paint not even painting a room it was just like what am i even doing here <laughs> um uh, okay great don't look up obviously don't look up well just, just don't look up is obviously <laughs> the greatest movie of the decade <laughs> because it has something to say chris and having something to say is more important than how you say it yeah, apparently exactly. on our website, there's a comment section where I'm being accused of being like a Trumpist or something because I didn't like oh. that look up. Is this true? I don't know. I don't read the comments. Well, no, that, 
Hillary. Didn't you vote for Hillary? I would say like on the, on the comments, section, I apparently think you are. I'm anti, I'm anti green. I know. Oh yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Be, yeah. Because you don't like a movie. That's exactly how it works. But yes, Chris, you have shared your thoughts uh, on, I would like to point everyone to Chris's article in Oscar uh, nomination reactions on alternate ending.com. But Chris, like, yeah, how are you, how are you feeling about the best picture for those who have uh, not caught up? Uh, better than I think it could be. I agree with Tim that it's, it's heavy up top. Uh, and then it has a few nice, uh, solidly good movies. And then, and then it sinks pretty deep, but I do think it could have been worse. Uh, there was no guarantee that nightmare alley was going to be nominated and nightmare alley isn't great, but it's, it's, it's good. It's good enough. Um, and it's better than what it could have been nominated in its place. For example, tick, tick, boom, um, uh, <laughs> drive my car, uh, was nominated. I don't know if you guys know that I like that movie or not, but, uh, it, it's uh, not your Twitter handle or anything. <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> Ryosuke Hamaguchi, uh, fan club. Um, but, uh, so, so that could have been, for example, being the Ricardos, which is a very, averagely bland fine movie so i i think it could have been worse uh but i agree once we get past uh drive my car and power of the dog which are and dune which are the for me the the clear three best movies of the 10 and then we have west side story belfast night morale in the next tier below that it's 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 pretty forgettable um i agree 100 percent with tim on uh, licorice pizza um but uh, yeah, so 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 there, there's some good stuff. Yeah, no, it's a, it's at least a relatively interesting sli- or like and mildly varied slate of movies. Like th- this is less boring to think about than a lot of them, even if the movies are more boring to watch. Yeah. Um, and Tim, were you going to say something? Oh, I was going to say just to sort of springboard off of what Chris was saying. Um, it could be worse, and it was worse last year. When yes. his worse Aaron Sorkin film got more award nominations. Yeah. And that to me is the only comparison we need. Which one was that again? Trial, uh, Trial the Chicago Seven. Seven. Oh. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Okay, Mandy. Uh, you were you had thoughts about Tick Tick Boom, I noticed, but also we can talk about the best picture slate too. <laughs> Yeah, so um, those who have seen my very short letterbox review know, and this is entirely sincere, that when I first heard the title of Tick, Tick, Boom, I thought it was going to be about the Unabomber, and I <laughs> wish it had been. Um, yeah, it, uh, it was not good. So one of the problems that I am running into here is that I haven't actually seen very many of these, mm. and the ones that I have seen, with a couple of exceptions, I watched at about 3.47 a.m., Hmm. when I was awake <laughs> with the baby. Because that tended to be when I got my movie watching room this year. Wh- which one is that? All, which one is that one? I need to know which one that one is. Which which ones did I watch at 347 AM? What's the 347 one? I didn't know it was more. Oh, no. Mul- multiple of these are 347 AM. <laughs> um, yeah, I watched The Power of the Dog late at night. Um, and so the ones that I've seen are The Power of the Dog, Don't Look Up, Licorice Pizza, and about 20 minutes of King Richard before I turned it off. See, Kara, all stars are lining up for I King know. Richard for you. Yeah, they really are. <laughs> I could tell. I could love it so much. Aren't Mandy, you? there's one missing from here that I know you and I both are very, I think are, are fairly passionate. I think the group is passionate about oh. that. I wouldn't mind seeing on here. I, I need you to at least mention it. And I think you know what I'm talking about. I'm pretty sure I do know what you're talking about because by far and away, my favorite movie that I saw this year was Pig. And I was begging the Academy in my heart up until the very last second <laughs> to not disappoint me, even though they, I knew they were going to. And somehow they still managed to disappoint me because I loved Pig so much. Nothing, nothing else that I saw produced just that kind of response in me mm. this year. Um, justice for Pig. We need it. We need justice, to start the hash, not get anything. Ha- the justice for Pig. Oh, it didn't no. get anything. Oh, it got not a thing. No, yeah, like we, we got some, I mean, Pig was like not going to get nominated for Oscars because the Oscars are the way that they are. Um, but there are some like blanket misses too. Um, no nominations for the French Dispatch, no nominations for the Green Knight. Like, and those were at least mm-hmm. medium buzzy. And oh. like in the specific case of Pig, it there was a campaign for Nick Cage for best actor. There was never a best picture run for Pig, but there was a campaign for Nicolas Cage for best actor the problem is that whoever is running Neon's awards office this season 
is much too busy huffing glue to actually attend to the business <laughs> of figuring out how to mount award campaigns for things like pig or memoria, AKA, wouldn't it be fun if we show it in like gas stations in Keokuk for a year? Yeah. Though in a way I kind of appreciate that about neon because I find Oscar something stumping just so dista- distasteful. One of the things that I was kind of terrified of was that, uh, um, and yes, it does have to be said this way every single time. House of Gucci was uh-huh. going to come away with like a thousand Oscar nominations. And mm. that movie was a piece of shit. So I am relieved to see that at the very least that one didn't isn't polluting all of the lists ever. Um, speaking of pieces of shit, I have nothing el- else to say about don't look up that Tim didn't already say. <laughs> My good Lord. Um. But yeah. Oh, also speaking of the the last duel, no nominations either. Ridley Scott no. very underrepresented. Um, D- Disney made a very clear choice about where they were going to put their awards attention, and if it, they didn't put their attention there, it got zilch. Yeah, was, and yeah. like I I wouldn't say I'm disappointed that Lady Gaga didn't get nominated because whatever. Um, that, I'm that heartbroken perf- that Jared Leto didn't get nominated. Mm-hmm. FYI. <laughs> <laughs> And Lady um, Gaga definitely does care about campaigning and oh, stuff. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. And she tried her ass off for the better part of the last three months, maybe more. It yeah, well, see, work. well, that's the thing. It's it's greedy because she has that Oscar for Shallow, but she wants to be recognized as actor. an actress. Mm-hmm. Um, she, wants, she wants to go the full strike sand. I agree with yeah. Tim, though. Jared Leto as Paolo Gucci was like the only part of House of Gucci that uh, it's a I, she. <laughs> it's a me, even Paolo. <laughs> we also were uh, uh, not given the opportunity to say for the fourth time in history that uh, an actor uh, was given an Oscar nomination and a Razzie nomination for the same right. role, which if Leto had been nominated for Oscar, that would have happened. Um, uh, we can't get that, though. So we but, can't get nice things. Can yeah, luckily, I just, have a, oh, sorry, can I just have a very brief digression on fuck the Razzies this year. Like they've never actually been legitimate in any way, shape, or form. But I just felt gross looking at the Agreed. worst supporting actor list, especially yeah. because it was like this is a list of four actors that you don't like and a harmless guy who did a totally fine job in a crappy musical. The the thing that blew my mind universally, the thing people said was one of the highlights of the last duel was Ben yeah. Affleck universally people were like "Ooh, matt damon hmm. how do you make that judgment call if you're the razzies that you give affleck a nomination like because they don't like ben affleck that's they don't why. like ben affleck that's why yeah and he's buzzier he's in the news he's dating people he's not dating people yeah well, yeah um but and yeah the end of the musical is not even a movie so i mean come on um it was movie enough for us to decide to talk about it but this, um this fair. but I mean, Diana the Musical deserves all the praise it can get for just being mind-numbingly psychedelic. Um, <laughs> but but yeah, so yeah. Also, the Razzies like worst screen couple thing. If you can't commit to the idea, why even have that? Um, it was like the worst screen couple is any actor in Diana with any song, and I'm like, that's nothing. And also, you made that joke <laughs> earlier when you put all the actors on your list. Razzies anyway. did one good thing this year. They created a new category for 2021. And presumably this category will only be for 2021 because it's entitled um, worst performance by Bruce Willis in a Bruce Willis movie in 2021. And Bruce Willis was nominated. What was it? Seven times eight. in this category? Eight. eight. How did he? He had eight movies come out this year. Um, I, I believe every of one of them was VOD. Oh, for I don't sure. think a single one of them Surely. had a theatrical release. Like uh, Redbox was very excited to give me uh, Midnight in the Switchgrass or whatever. Um, <laughs> did not listen. Um, but anyway, so we spent 20 minutes talking about Best Picture. So I think I'm going to expand the conversation to be a little broader. Let's talk about Best Actor, Best Actress as kind of like a lump situation. Um, so we're looking at, you know, Javier Bardem, Benedict Cumberbatch, Andrew Garfield, Will Smith, Denzel. Um, Speaking Chastain. of lumps, I did tell you about Benedict Cumberbatch and Power of the Dog, right? 
<laughs> yes, you did. Um, I'm sorry. Did you say you said power of the dog, right? Not power of the dog. That's what yeah. I heard. <laughs> <laughs> um, it sounds like the dog doesn't have too much power. So you're still not convincing me. Um, we also it has got- so much power that they can only put it on screen for a few frames. Uh, I've seen I've seen a lot of white dick, Tim. It's no. it's fine. I don't need to see another one right now. Okay. That's fine. Um, I'm not saying exclusively, but just too many. Um, Penelope Cruz, Nicole Kidman, Kristen Stewart, and Olivia Coleman for the 18th year in a row. Um, how are we feeling about this slate here? Let's go to Mandy. Oh, me first, huh? Um, well, I was, okay. Um, well, it was nice that Denzel that, at uh, the tragedy and Macbeth didn't get totally snubbed. Um, that at least some of the some of the fabulous acting in that movie was acknowledged. I know we're going to get to best supporting actress, but that was the one where I got really sad, even though I was pretty sure from the beginning that I was going to get sad and I put her on my list anyway, but whatever. Um, Andrew Garfield was definitely the best part of Tick, Tick, Boom. Um, yeah, I, th- I think he thoroughly proves the the charisma um, that ma- it, where it makes sense why anyone would want to be friends with that character. <laughs> Indeed, yes. But also saying that somebody was the best part of Dick of <laughs> wow. Dick Dick Dong. Yeah. Dick Dick Poo, am I right? <laughs> Mandy, this is what happened. <laughs> this is what happened. <laughs> <laughs> this, there's no escaping it. I'm telling you. I'm trying for you. So anyway. I'm sorry, I wasn't thinking on my feet because I, I was primed by Dick. The joke is obviously shit shit poo, not dick dick poo, but either way. I mean it's a bad it movie. Terrible movie. I'm watching a movie. Yeah, it depends on what you're into. Um, but anyway, saying that someone was the best part of either Dick Tick, Dick Tick Boo or Dick Tick Boom is a little like saying that something was the best part of like having the stomach flu. So it's not really that big of a compliment. Um, Benedict Cumberbatch was real good. I don't think anybody is disputing that. Um, I'm a little bit annoyed that uh, I had Nicole Kidman on my predictions list until the very last second when I swapped her out for Lady Gaga um, because I figured that the Oscar stumping was going to work because uh, I have no faith in anything. Um, Mm. I'm really, really happy. And I know this will be shared by a number of people here to see Kristen Stewart on the best actress list. I have been aboard the Kristen Stewart is good actually train since 2008. And I'm glad to see that that is finally catching on as the gospel truth. Yeah. And as it was looking increasingly unlikely to do Mm -hmm. so, um, Tim, do you want to yeah. chime in on these categories? Uh, just kind of on a second. Yay, Kristen Stewart. Yay, Penelope Cruz. Probably my two favorite nominees, certainly between these two categories. Um, and I didn't expect either one of them to show up. Uh, I have not seen Jessica Chastain's performance in the eyes of Tammy Faye. It's the, the only nominated performance I haven't seen yet. Barring that, I would say that actress feels like a fantastic category to me. It, it, it would be my favorite category of the year if i had seen chastain and felt that she did or did not drag it down um so all about the the best actresses uh best actor yeah you know best actor Will, is Will Smith's gonna finally win his like oscar that. and that's that's fine he, he's he's been a trooper he should get an oscar for that what's the weak link here know. is it javier uh, like that's you do a good job I, I i'd say bardem is the weak link in actor mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. Cause that's the uh, only one that I'm, I'm kind of feeling out. I I've only seen three out of these uh, 10 performances and um, I feel, I feel good. Like these are all solid for the ones I did see. I feel solid for, uh, about, which is uh, Kristen Stewart and Spencer. Um, uh, let's see what else. Uh, Andrew Garfield. Uh, I mean, yes, he's the MVP on a, on a losing team and, uh, and Benedict Cumberbatch. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I feel, I feel good. I, I don't feel like anybody was, Excluded. It would have been fun to see Lady Gaga uh, come to the Oscars again, but I'm sure there'll be other opportunities in the future. Yeah, she she will continue to work so hard to be respected, and she will go ahead and close the motherfucking Oscars as long as she can. Um, but without the you know kind of Glenn Close uh, prestige, I guess to begin with. Um, Chris, how 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 are we doing on this slate? I think it's a it's a pretty good list for both. I, I agree with what everyone said. Um, the the leading actor uh, category was pretty well set 
from uh, precursors uh, for a while. And Brenna, I know you said you you don't like looking at BAFTA and the Guild Awards and the Critic Awards. Uh, that that I, doesn't I, mean I, it's wrong to do so. I just <laughs> don't. I don't like to spoil it for myself. I get it. I get it. I, I, I do anyway. Um, but I think Will Smith has been the front runner to win this category essentially ever since King Richard came out. I mean, this is the perfect type of movie that would win uh, a leading actor, a leading actress, uh, Oscar, uh, a darling Hollywood figure who's never won and has contributed an immense amount of work to Hollywood over the years. And finally, changes his appearance and changes his voice and and quote digs deeper so i think i think will smith is is destined to win this if he is upset i would imagine it is benedict cumberbatch for the power of the dog who would do it but uh yeah denzel and garfield were were certainly likely to be nominated as well the last spot was a little bit of a toss-up i know javier bardem did get the sag nomination um, but I was thinking that Leonardo DiCaprio for Don't Look Up was going to sneak in there, not because I wanted him to. I mean, I am a Leo fan, um, but uh, not because I wanted him to for this movie, but because I know the Academy loves their Leo. They, they love Leo. But um, to echo what Tim said about the leading actresses, uh, this is... Yeah, this is a very deep field this year, I think, and just an immense amount of talent. Um, there was no guarantee that Penelope Cruz was going to get in for Parallel Mothers, and I think this is maybe the best performance of her career. It's certainly up there. Um, we've talked about Kristen Stewart. She was considered the front runner for a while, uh, but then she didn't win the New York Film Critics uh, Award. She wasn't even nominated for SAG. She wasn't even nominated for BAFTA. And so then it began to look like she wasn't going to be nominated here. Fortunately, she was. Um, so that was great for her to get on. But yeah, Jessica Chastain, Tim, I do think is pretty good in the eyes of Tammy Faye. I'm not a, a huge biopic person come to life guy, but I think what she does is pretty interesting uh, in there. And of course, yeah, Olivia Coleman, Brendan, as you mentioned, for 18 years running now mm -hmm. uh, is, is winning um, or being nominated. I, I do want to point out two actors uh, that did not get nominated that I would like to have seen nominated. Um, one is now it, it wasn't probably going to happen for this one, but uh, Virginia Efire, uh, if I'm pronouncing her last name correctly, which I'm probably not for Benedetta, I thought was phenomenal. I'm a big Benedetta fan and I would have loved to have seen her in leading actress, but that was never going to happen. One that maybe had slightly more chance of happening was Simon Rex in Red Rocket for leading actor. Um, I know A24 put together a campaign for him, but Red Rocket is a very small film, very small budget. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that was always a long shot, but Simon Rex gives one of my favorite performances of the year. And who doesn't like the story of a uh, VJ slash model slash part-time actor hitting it big, 25 years later into his career um, with, you know, the part he was probably born to play in Red Rocket, but people just have to see it instead. Yeah. Um, uh, Simon Rex is a big snub for me too. First of all, because I did want to have a reason to see Red Rocket and now I don't um, because see, I'm, I'm literally the opposite. I'm thrilled that now I'm not obliged to see Red Rocket. Well, see, well, yeah, I mean, that's that's the thing, though, because like Sean Baker is not going to get me in the door. But the concept of Red Rocket seemed interesting enough to me. But like him being there, I was like, oh, I don't I don't know. I know. Um, I know at least Tim isn't as big on Sean Baker as I am. And Brennan, it sounds like you are neither. But I will say going along with our theme of penis. Um, that might be a reason to get you into the door for Red Rocket. Um, and conflating that with uh, NSYNC's Bye Bye Bye. Or N is that NSYNC or Backstreet Boys? Uh, yeah. Yeah, NSYNC. Um, yeah, that's, that, might, that might be a moment. No, well, I was going to say, um, I, I also wanted him to be nominated because he would then be the first Oscar-nominated actor who I have seen jerk off to completion on camera. Um, because he did have a phase in porn um, that inspired that role. What's it called? Um, he was in Young, Hard, and Solo number three. I gotta write that. Um, I yeah. think he just. I thought, I thought I thought it to be an extremely lame retread of Young, Hard, and Solo number two. I couldn't even finish it. Was it actually. I mean, I made, it about, I, I made it about eight minutes in, and I was done with it. You, you don't. I mean, 
um but like you you just don't like meta material though because in his scene he's jerking off to young heart and solo number two um which i think is a really interesting <laughs> choice <laughs> i like need to get out <laughs> see now i'm actually <laughs> <laughs> um it's actually it's really interesting what is happening right now? <laughs> everything i've said is true anyway carrie how do you feel about the actor and actress nominations your sarcasm is very good brandon or you're you're no th- that is the truth okay that is the truth i was trying to write it down though so you said it's young hard and uh, and going solo and solo 1996 hard and okay you can Put find it on your it, watch list, Carrie. You can find it on your favorite uh, <laughs> porn website near you. What would be the reaction? I don't even know how that shows up on a letterbox. If I put like on my must watch list, young heart. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, uh, letterbox. letterbox does not have pornography because um, uh, at TMDB does not have pornography. So, <sighs> yeah. They have started allowing a select uh, amount of adult films you have to turn a feature on to get this said select amount and it is a curated amount so imagine being on that team in letterbox <laughs> to curate which porn movies are on the website it's i mean you, you know that though it's interesting <laughs> yeah you know you can log Wes craven's angela is the fireworks woman on letterbox mm. so that's cool um carrie yes uh actor or actress how are you feeling about these people not a ton of thoughts other than I, the one thing I'll share is I have been kind of polarized by Kristen Stewart in the past. And I would say this is the first movie that I saw her in that I was like, wow, like, wow, this is you're really talented. I always felt like in the past, like in Twilight movies or things like that, like she was just doing herself like her real like this is just how she would no, be. Simon Rex was doing himself. Hey. Oh, <laughs> oh, I get it. I get it. Well, oh. <laughs> but, <laughs> this is the one where I was like, oh, you, it, it was just, I don't know. I was, it was really transformative. Like I thought this was a great performance by her. And then um, I haven't caught the lost daughter yet, but Olivia Coleman for me is always, always a front runner. Um, and I caught is the father, fr- the father's not from this year. Is it? No, that was from last year. Technically, the father Barely. was released this uh, calendar year, but it qualified for last year's Academy wow. Awards. Thanks. So Anthony Hopkins yeah. won for that. What did she get? Did she get anything? Nominated. She was nominated for supporting actress for last year. Should have won. Should have won. So um, I do want to. Ca- I'm going to catch all these movies before we actually do our uh, Oscars episode. But loved that. And then yeah, I think the other ones are just yeah, so so. Nothing too exciting. Okay, great. Um, I say, yeah, let's move on to supporting actor and actress. Um, and then I'm going to kind of open it up to a broader scope. I, otherwise just, it's gonna I need to start hours. with with a really disappointing piece of news. Uh, which yes. Is that Young Heart and Solo 3 is not on Pornhub. <laughs> I can get you the clip of his scene. Okay. But I, I can't drop a link to it in chat if it's not on Pornhub. That's the problem. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, too. <laughs> It'll be after the show, Tim. It'll be after the All show. Right. Um. It's anyway, for Carrie. <laughs> no, no, it's it's important, and I, I, I you no, know, whatever. Um, the jokes <laughs> have been made. I do think it's a genuinely interesting clip for those who are interested. Um. Anyway, supporting actor, supporting actress, and then I'm gonna kind of open it up because we're gonna be doing this podcast for eight hours if I don't. <laughs> Um, I'm also not going to list all the actor names. We're all looking at a spreadsheet. If you listening at home don't know what we're talking about, look f- look up the list on literally any website. It'll be there. <laughs> Including our own. So Exactly. Okay, let's start with Tim on this one. How are we feeling about supporting? Uh, supporting, I'm feeling fairly run-of-the-mill on supporting actress. Um, I think the semi-surprising appearances of both Jesse Buckley and Judy Dench classed up supporting actress more than necessarily I had been anticipating was going to be. Um, supporting actor, I think is actually pretty cool. Like as I've already registered my disappointment that, that Paolo Gucci is, is not in the movie is not on the list, but we did get Jesse Plemons for power of the dog. So there's, there's, you know, Rob's favorite uh, JK Simmons from being the Ricardos who I thought was quite good at being the Ricardos. Uh, and no, no pr- trying to pretend that Bradley Cooper's two and a half minute SNL bit was acting in Licorice Pizza. So I, <laughs> I actually was super into the supporting actor list. All right, great. Uh, how about Rob? How about you? Yeah, another one where I'm a little bit weak in this area, but Jesse Plemons, uh, to Tim's point, always uh, 
gets me excited. So hap- I'm I'm happy for him. You you got a married or a engaged couple, I should say, and uh, in uh, categories side by side uh, nominees. So that's that's pretty neat, just from a, that story perspective that I was saying that I'm always looking for. It's just like really interesting story arcs there. So how cool would it be if they both if they both win and thank one another in each other's speech? Right there, you go. I see the heart from Mandy. That would be super cute. No, Rob. Um, and there are actually two couples nominated: uh, Javier Bardem and Penelope Cruz oh, are a couple. You're right. Yeah. Gosh, double cup, uh, c- double coupling here. So yeah, that would be those <laughs> would be really interesting outcomes. Um, uh, yeah, that's that's where I'm at. Yeah, fair enough. Um, Chris, since 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 you were just talking, talk some more. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'm not, you know, over the moon with, uh, yeah, I guess really anyone on supporting actress. I think it was disappointing that Ruth Nega in passing was um, was snubbed. I thought she was really good in it. And frankly, so was Tessa Thompson. And I could have seen Thompson uh, sneak in for lead actress if that category wasn't as as deep as it was. Um, Kirsten Dunst is really good in Power of the Dog. Uh, DeBose is is good in her scenes in West Side Story. Um, I am surprised that Judy Dench snuck in for Belfast uh, over Katrina Balfe. I, I, I thought the the ma or no uh, mom. Uh, Judy Dench was mom. Katrina Balfe was mom. I thought she was going to get in, but um, yeah, they only had room for one, I suppose. For supporting actor, um, yep, yeah, it's a me, a Paolo. I mean, he was my favorite. <laughs> He was my favorite, but, you know, he, he's not there. Kieran Hines was really good in Belfast. Um, I, don't, I don't know. J.K. Simmons, he played a grumpy drunk, I guess. I wasn't really over the moon with him. But, uh, um, yeah, Jesse Plemons was a big surprise. Um, he wasn't on a lot of the precursors radar. I think he got a BAFTA, but he didn't get um, much other than that. Um, but regardless, I think Cody Smith McPhee is going to run away with this category and um, for Power of the Dog. Uh, but, yeah. So my thoughts. I have a kid. Mm-hmm. I don't even do he's it. Youngish. He's, he's like well, wandering around the entire time. He doesn't say anything for like two hours. <laughs> well, Carrie, let's go to you. Who do you think deserves that best supporting actor? Oh, geez. I would give it to Jesse Plemons. I oh wait, is Troy Kotsur? Is that the dad? That was the dad and Carter. Fart jokes. The fart, I love yeah. a good fart joke. You know that. Um, gosh, but I'm going to be honest with myself. Probably Jesse Plemons for Power of the Dog. He was the best part of that movie for me. And I didn't hate that movie. I just thought he was like my, like when things got stressful, like that was such a tense, tense movie. And when things got stressful, I could always come back to Jesse Plemons. He was like the, oh, it's going to be okay. I, I thought he was so good in that Um and Kirsten Dunst was too. I thought both of them, like I was convinced that she was going to just completely lose it or like melt away from sweat. Like she just seemed <laughs> hot. like the whole time she just seemed hot. Um, but I thought both of them were really good. So I don't know. I'm kind of excited to see what happens for both of them too. Great. And Mandy, how are you doing? Um, I'm going to gloat for a moment because the Ooh. best supporting actor list was my one major victory because <laughs> I correctly called the double power of the dog nomination, um, which is a I risky have, maneuver. It paid off in, indeed. But uh, I, I don't know. I just felt it. And also, like, I have found Jesse Plemons super interesting ever since he was the single solitary good thing in Vice. Um, <laughs> I forgot he was so, in there. <laughs> he was. He, um, he, he's basically the only part of Vice that I haven't just tried as hard as I can to eliminate from my memory. God, I freaking cannot stand Adam McKay. Um, <laughs> but that's a discussion for another day. I, too, am sad not to see Paolo Gucci on the list, but <laughs> we've already gone over that. Um, I just like J.K. Simmons. He just seems like a real stand-up spiffy mensch, so I'm always happy to see him on this sort of thing. Um, the... The name on here that I was sad not to see, even though I knew it was a long shot, was Mike Faced for West Side Story, Mm. Um, because I find him, again, a very interesting performer in general. Also, I think he's super cute, which doesn't actually matter for Oscars, but it's a plus. But you want to be able to look at them during the telecast. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's very true. Um, I like his hair. What can I say? Mm. Um, For supporting actress, uh, I did real bad in this category. If I hadn't, again, removed Jesse Buckley from my list at the last minute, I would have been a lot more impressive. Um, in that group. Um, do you want to hear my kind of awful but entirely sincere theory for what for why Ruth Nega got snubbed? 
Yes. They, they don't want to have to say her name if she wins. <laughs> well, if it's anything. You know, when, people when loving happened, I remember that was like a sort of thing people were like thrown by for sure. So that would uh, not actually surprise it's anything me. like that poor person who had to, uh, she was, par- uh, what was her, the two people who were making the nomination announcements this morning? I felt really oh, bad. Um, we haven't talked about that at all, but that was <laughs> yeah. very uncomfortable. Yeah. Really? Les- Leslie Jordan and Tracy Ellis Ross. I didn't watch this telecast. So what, what happened? Leslie was not he, well, uh, doing. It was well. not entirely his fault. They clearly did not give him the phonetic spellings of all of the names that he was going to have to oh, say no. so right out of the gate. He's just turning into a me. He's just mispronouncing left and right. But you're you're more you're broadcast into the world. And, and supporting actress was the first category. Yeah. So so the the. Oh, the no. possibility of of misfiring on Ruth Nega, I think, would have been oh. very perilous. Yeah, yeah. Well, he was horrified, and he even was like shaking his head, like he was and just it, like, "What's happening here?" And then he started. At, at one point, Tracy Ross Ellis even made a joke about like, "Stop stealing my lines!" Ha ha ha! It's like, oh, oh, geez. <laughs> oh my god! And then finally, he just started going with the titles, which I was like, "Smooth move!" Like, just don't incriminate yourself anymore. Like, just go with the titles. So he did, but I felt bad for him. Leslie, what's his last name again? Leslie, Leslie Jordan. Yeah. Well, look, to, at least I, I mean, again, I didn't watch it. Um, maybe it was worse, but I don't think it could be worse than the clusterfuck that was the Golden Globe announcements with Snoop Dogg fundamentally mispronouncing every word that came across his desk, including Ben Affleck. How did he say it? He said Ben Affleck. <laughs> This is just expected of Snoop Dogg, though. Like, I feel like people would have been disappointed if Snoop Dogg did. Oh, yeah. No, he rolled in completely high to that ballroom at 6 a.m. You don't it, say. I know. It was, but he was the only one they could get. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, a uh, topic for another day. And that day was two months ago. Um, anyway, so before we open it up, Obviously, Tim and Chris are like really on their game as far as watching all of these movies. They're going to be the people who like at the end of the day will have seen the most nominated films. But for the other ones of us that have other things that we're doing that aren't watching movies all the time. Losers. (laughs) um, So what's on your priority list to catch up with before the ceremony? Um, So, Carrie, do you have any priorities of like nominated films you haven't seen that you want to watch? Yep, I'm going to get out there. I'm going to see King Richard. <laughs> you guys have sold me on it. <laughs> uh-huh. Can't keep myself away from licorice pizza. I feel like I have to see that. Don't I? Well, nothing. nothing you won't like No it. one has said For anything. Sure. Like, okay, I don't understand. Okay. Like, there's no one positive on this film. I just really like so licorice. I like- I like- licorice pizza made me feel gross. Like, starting with the title, like, I know what licorice pizza means, but thinking about a licorice pizza just kind of makes my stomach curl up and die. And I don't know. So what does it mean? I'm gonna pull a pizza yeah. Meat. I'm gonna pull a carry. I don't know what a licorice pizza means actually. Um, wait, Mandy, Mandy, you can go for it. Isn't it a reference to like a vinyl record? Isn't that what it's supposed to be? It, it, yeah. it was a it was a reference to a chain of record stores in Southern okay, California. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I was as, hoping as, for something. As dirty. you would all know, if you'd read the licorice pizza review on alternateending.com, or as you would know, if you grew up in Southern California, like I did, because I was like, I know what that title is. Moving on. <laughs> Well, maybe in I'll any, catch, catch Belfast. I'm gonna in catch- any case, that's deeply unappetizing. Yeah, ex- exactly. Oh, you're going to catch Belfast. Great. Mandy, what, what are you catching up with that is not a disgusting food product? <laughs> Indeed. Um, I need to see Spencer. Um, mm-hmm. That's probably one of my priorities. Um, I am also, I need to see Dune, but I need to finish reading Dune first. And mm-hmm. my husband and I are reading Dune together very slowly in the breaks that we get from raising our child. So it might be a while before that happens. The go through a a work of literature or art with your partner game has been biting me on the ass super hard. So I feel. Do you read um, aloud to each other, Mandy? Like, are you, do you take turns reading pages? We do. Yeah. Well, we, we generally take, take turns reading chapters. Um, So cute. This is like the cutest thing. I could never do that with you ever. That is extraordinarily cute. Well, he also, he also, this is going to be fun when he listens to this later, but uh, he also has like a very, very soothing voice. So if I am even slightly tired when we start (laughs) reading Dune, I am going to fall asleep in a couple of pages. (laughs) Um, So that's another thing that's been slowing us down. 
but I will get to that one eventually. And then um, let's see, what else am I going to prioritize? I just don't want to see a lot of these is the problem. A lot of this looks like homework to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I do want to see Nightmare Alley though. So that one probably as well. Sounds good. And wait, Tim, what are you, what are you uh, doing with, with, with your guy? Was his name Horatio? Is that what we were calling him? Uh, uh- Something like that. Uh, we are watching our way through Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Uh, and, and it is it has taken us like six months to get through one season. Are you to the oh, good yeah. part yet? Uh, oh, yeah. Well, I mean, Deep Space Nine's good part comes in pretty early. But we, we, are, we are in the, the good part of season two. Nice. And yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm in the same boat. I started reading like Water for Chocolate to my boyfriend, uh, Ben. And we started in like June... And that that uh, each chapter of that book is a month. And I was like, oh, one day we'll catch up to the month that we're in. And like, you know, in September, I'll read September. And we're it hasn't happened. <laughs> do, do you think you might fall the other way around? It actually. Yeah, I think we can make it if we just let the year pass on by and we will. Um Anyway, Rob, what else are what are you uh, going to try to catch up on? Well, like Mandy, there's uh, there's so many on here that do feel like homework. As far as things I'm excited to, to see. um it may not actually be meaningful because I, I don't know if Jessica Chastain has a has a shot, but I actually f- think the the eyes of Tammy Faye seems like something I might be interested in seeing. And then um, I do want to see Denzel in the tragedy of Macbeth. And I think there's enough wholesomeness and art maybe in Belfast that um, I think it'll be worth my while. And then just for the sheer um, support of of Chris and his passion for Drive My Car, I, I, I feel like I need to spend the, the three hours and and going on a road trip. Uh, it's, wanna... It might be more supportive of Chris if you don't render it. <laughs> also, can we briefly go back to how it's an actual crime against humanity that Catherine Hunter didn't get nominated for Best Supporting Actress? Oh, like, man. Yeah. I know, she, I know oh, she's man. I know she's in the movie for like five minutes, but holy moly. Literally my that. favorite screen performance of the year. Yeah. She was incredible and she, she was never in contention for whatever silly reason, but absolutely one of the best of the year, 100%. Yeah, and that is one of the ones that I want to catch up with. I really need to catch up with the tragedy of the Scottish play. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so because of that performance, I've heard so much and the rest sounds interesting enough. And it's an hour and 40 minutes. And don't mind if I do <laughs> Oscar movies. I, I'm currently two thirds of the way through Nightmare Alley because I had to record a podcast. That movie's two and a half fucking hours long. <laughs> Nightmare Alley and King Richard are both two and a half fucking hours long. And like, what oh is wrong? God, I don't why? get it with studios. Yeah. The one, one of the nice things I will say about Belfast, I'll actually say many nice things about Belfast, but that movie is only 97 minutes long and it very easily, really? Kenneth Branagh very easily could have turned that into 150 minutes slog like these others. It's a swift 97. You can get through it in one night pretty easily. Good for yeah. him. If I were in charge of the world, as I should be, mm-hmm. there would be a rule that if your movie is going to be more than 90 minutes long, <laughs> you must explain in writing why you need those extra minutes. And then I will decide whether you in <laughs> yeah. fact need you them. You must submit your case to the Commissar of Film Running Times. Exactly. <laughs> I love that. That's more important than an MPAA. Come on. Um or, or we're, we're the MPA now, right? We're, we're, we're slick. We're modern. Exactly. Um, anyway, let's open up the floor. We have been talking for a long time. So we're looking at all the other nominations, major surprises, major snubs. I'm sorry if this is too broad, but what are you going to well, do? I, I want to just very quickly play the what am I looking forward to catching up with game? Oh, OK. Because what are you, yeah, yeah. What are you looking forward to? That's a better question than I, what are you going to watch? I mean, I'm going to watch everything. I've only got uh, six feature length things to go plus on the 15 shorts, but I did not realize until today when I was looking up uh, one of the nominees for best animated short, Robin Robin, I knew that was an Aardman film. So it was already like, yay, a new Aardman, hooray, because who doesn't love Aardman? They're, they're the mm-hmm. best. I learned today that Robin Robin was co-directed by Mikey Please who made the Eagleman stag, which readers will perhaps remember is one of my absolute favorite films of the 2010s. And, and so it was very exciting to me to learn that he and Ardman had, had joined their forces to make something that I could theoretically be watching right now on Netflix. You could be, it's, it's there. It's waiting for you, Tim. Yeah. Um, and Chris, are there any things, and is there anything that you're specifically excited to, to visit? 
Yeah. So um, I did a quick tallying and I think if I counted correctly, there are 34 uh, narrative, 34 different narrative feature films that were nominated for an Oscar. So that's not including the shorts uh, or the documentaries, but it is asterisk, uh, including Flea, because Flea was nominated in a few different categories. Mm -hmm. But anyway, of those 34, I've seen 30. So obviously, I want to see the last four, which for me would be The Worst Person in the World, Lunana, Four Good Days, because I got a song nomination, and Cyrano. Um, and then so bad. and then I also want to finish up the documentaries and the shorts and be a completist like I like I usually am with the Oscars. But that's my uh, that's my plan going forward. I don't know. Speaking of the worst person in the world, this <laughs> has been something that my friends and I, I very much want to see this movie. Uh, and, and Tim, at least I know you have. But um, this is something that me and my friends have been trying to figure out for a long time. When was it released in the United States and 2021, because in order to be nominated for a category outside of international feature, uh, it has to be nom it has to be released in a certain period of time. And for this award show, that period of time was March 1, uh, 2021 through December 31. I could not find anywhere where the worst, per uh, worst person in the world was released. Yeah. I'm guessing it had like a no nothing a qualifier run in New York City or Los Angeles, but I've even Googled like qualifier run New York City uh, and, and I can't find anything. But if it, uh, Tim it got a one week qualifying run in L.A. Thanksgiving week and I, I figured out a hack. Go to Rotten Tomatoes, look for when the L.A. Times and New York Times published their review. And, and that's how I found worst person. Uh, L.A. Times published a review on, I believe, the 23rd of November. Good hack. There you go. So. So all this time I was thinking it's it, the worst person in the world was going to be one of those movies where it's nominated for international feature for this year, but I'm going to count it for my next year list, but nope, it is 2021. It, it is a 2021 film. So I'll be looking forward to seeing that for by, sure. By the, by the bizarre and insane rules that people like you and I shackle ourselves with. It is a 2021 film. I spend way too much energy and effort. <laughs> it took me so long to figure out if Bell counted as 2021 or 2022. And, it, and I guess it is a 2021 film. It is. Same week, actually, as uh, okay. worst person in the world had its LA qualifying. Run. Yeah, so Bell was uh, eligible, and I had hoped. I mean, I hadn't seen it yet, but I'm a fan of um, the director's work. Mm -hmm. I, I had hoped that it would sneak in there for animated feature, and, um, and it, of course, it did not. And it, they typically do find space for a big anime film, uh, and in the past, his has been included. Uh, Mirai was a sort of film, so I, I thought Bell was actually. I thought I was going to be clever by predicting Bell when nobody else was, and I. I instead went four for five in uh, animated feature. So you and I both incorrectly uh, yeah. were cle yeah, incorrectly clever. <laughs> that, that that's uh, the title of your memoir. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, okay. So yeah, let let's open up the board. Let's let's just kind of shoot around. Like, so is there anything that's really standing out to you as far as like something you're excited about, something you were disappointed about, just across the board in this slate of nominations? And I'm going to go to Rob first. Yeah, you know, I, I think I think we've all been basically saying this without saying it. I think for the most part, the Oscars didn't disappoint us too much. Like for the most part, they got it more right than they have in the last many years. So there aren't too many surprises. Like there's like some silly things like Free Guy has been nominated for an Oscar now. So that's yes? that's insane. In which case? <laughs> yes. For visual effects. visual effects. Oh, they had some good effects there. They did have good effects. Yes. So they had effects. Remember when uh <laughs> they take Ryan Reynolds, it's mm -hmm. actually normally Ryan Reynolds, but then they make a, a version of him where he's very muscular for the game. Dude. That was that's, that was really that, was, that was an effect. Yeah. So yeah, actually you know, I, I like the free guy effects. I like them a hell of a lot more than the Shang-Chi effects, for example. I guess I'll advocate for my for my kids and maybe Mandy can get on board with this because I think she's sung this song more than ever. Like it would have been nice to to see a uh, little Bruno on there as, as the number one song uh, for the last however In, ineligible. Weeks. Disney didn't submit it. Uh, yeah, it would have been. It would have been it? nice. They I submitted it. another song from the film. Yeah. Oh, which one? Those the you most a, boring song. song. <laughs> sir, there's sir, a sir. It's the best song in the soundtrack. How dare you? No, the no, best song I, in the soundtrack is the Family Mode Go. Okay, those oh, are the two best songs I on the soundtrack. <laughs> I look. I am. I am 
what is the opposite of an apologist? Because I am that for Lin Manuel Miranda. <laughs> um, Fair enough. As I am I. an enemy of Lin Manuel Miranda. Um, and Dos Oruguitos, um, it being the most boring song does not preclude it from being the best song on the soundtrack. That is an extraordinarily good point. Thank you for clarifying. You're welcome. <laughs> because the most exciting song is the song that the sister has about the like tick, tick, tick till you break or the whatever. Um, the the one that Earth shit. is with nervous. Yeah. That man won Tony's. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Yeah, sorry, Mandy. Also, Rob, do you know what has now supplanted Bruno in my house as the thing I walk around my house singing uh, everything to the chart? tuna? I think I know what it is. Why does it, Rob? I, I think you do. I think it's the opening song to, to pass the popcorn, as it should pass be. Pat the bunny, pat the bunny, <laughs> pat the bunny. <laughs> Mandy's just passing things, passing things left and right. <laughs> you have a nice voice, Mandy. You have a nice voice. Should have had you do that intro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Mandy, well, again, um, I'm just picking whoever is the most recent person to make sounds out of their mouth. Um, so for you, what are your, uh, your big kind of uh, noticeable moments with the rest of what we're looking at? Here. Um, I pretty much agree with Chris that like the Oscars didn't do too badly at not disappointing us this year, though I will be bitter about Pig and also about The Last Duel for the rest of my life, probably. Um, but I am darkly and meanly amused that House of Gucci did not get mm. nominated for costume design. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And again, I mean, look, uh, maybe I'm, I wasn't just I wasn't gay in the 80s, but like the Gucci designs from that period are ugly as sin they're not good <laughs> um anyway chris chris how, how what are we looking at yeah um mandy you're right with the last duel i mean there uh, obviously uh, tim said disney didn't put an ounce of effort into campaigning for it but there's no reason the last duel shouldn't have been a stronger contender at least for costume design um maybe frankly makeup and hairstyling uh maybe sound sound editing if that category still existed but alas um uh, so i've got two yay moments um and one <laughs> just kind of pound this dead horse drive my mm. car also got an adapted screenplay nomination i think um uh, outside of its international feature nomination which it is probably likely going to win now um given its support elsewhere um I think adapted screenplay was perhaps the the next most likely because uh, Hamaguchi took a 40 page Murakami short story and turned it into a three hour long character study and that people like uh, and some people love. So uh, so that's pretty impressive. And I'm very, very happy he got nominated for screenplay. Another yay moment for me because I'm a big um, Almodovar fan. I'm a big Parallel Mothers fan. It wasn't just Cruz who was awarded for that, but Alberto Iglesias got a nomination for original score. Uh, Iglesias and Almodovar work uh, together frequently, and I'm very happy to see uh, Iglesias get some attention here. There were some pretty shocking uh, snubs in the craft categories or actually first I'll start with screenplay. Um, Aaron Sorkin, who, you know, I'm hit or miss with, but I definitely thought he was going to get in for being the Ricardos because um, it seems like the movie Academy voters would love. And Aaron Sorkin has at least, I think four nominations to his name already and one win. So I, I fully expected him to get in, but he didn't. He was, he was um, snubbed for the worst person in the world, took its spot. Um, the French Dispatch not being nominated for production design is very bizarre to me. Um, I, I'm, I'm one of the few people who's a little less enthusiastic about the French Dispatch because of its, uh, I think it's uh, narratively messy, but I mean, it's brilliant to watch and it's technical craft, it's production design. I mean, it's, it's amazing. So I'm pretty shocked it was, uh, it was omitted there. And then Lastly, I'll, I'll say, and this maybe sort of ties into like where we think the awards are going. I do think the power of the dog is probably leading its way to win 
uh, most of the big awards and including best picture. Uh, if one of the movies that may, might have been its biggest competitor would have been Belfast, but Belfast was snubbed for both film editing and cinematography, which if Belfast was a serious heavyweight contender, you'd think that it would have sneaked into at least one, if not both of those categories. Uh, meanwhile, of course, Power of the Dog did get did get in those categories. So I was a little surprised to see Belfast, Belfast uh, snubbed from those two categories. But as a result, I'm increasingly more confident in the Power of the Dog's the power of the power of the dog. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and I will echo your support of Parallel Mothers. It, it's not my favorite Elmodovar. It's not even my favorite Elmodovar of the year, which is The Human Voice, which is a spectacular short film. It's very good. Oh, I want to live in that fake apartment. Um, <laughs> anyway, so, but I, I, I'm happy about those because I love any Elmodovar getting nominated. And I'm actually happy it didn't get nominated for foreign film because I don't want to watch him lose to Drive My Car. Not that Drive My Car doesn't deserve it, um, but I just hate watching Pedro Almodovar lose. And and you'll never have to watch that because the Spanish government despises him for some reason. Spain hates him. They never, it's it's crazy. Yeah, they, they didn't uh, allow Parallel Mothers to be their entry this year. They didn't allow uh, Talk to Her talk, talk to be to their her, entry. All about my mother. They just, they don't like him. It's very, yeah, well, it's very strange. Yeah, uh, the, you know, the Catholics, what are you going to do? Um, also, I'm not mad about the Cruella costume nomination because it, it's well. not, it's not the those fault. Really cool. It's not the fault of those costumes that they were lit extremely poorly. <laughs> um, I do love costumes. I do love the dress made of garbage. I love that they just made Cruella Vivian Westwood for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and to round it out, Carrie, any, any, any big moments for you that we're looking at here? No, no. Um, <laughs> I, I, I was going to end on a note of apology. So, well, one of them is, um, so Mandy, I feel like my review of pig knowing how much you love it now was not a pro like, not, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, not, not appropriate. Like I liked the movie. What's the, I don't know. You're allowed to be lukewarm on things that I love. That's that's permitted. I, I think I liked it more than my. So I think the fact that I quickly ranked Nick Cage movies in that letterbox review and I put it after City of Angels made it seem like it wasn't good. It's just that <laughs> City of Angels for me is really good. So <laughs> I really did like Vig. <laughs> The th and I want to call out as so that we, I can make sure that we're still friends is that I will tell you the scene in that movie where the guy takes the bite of food and the tears start streaming down his face is probably one of the best cinematic moments that I've ever experienced. Like I was so caught off guard by it. I didn't expect it. And I, I think that's like, again, one of the most moving cinematic moments movements that i've ever experienced so i really did enjoy and did enjoy pig and it should have gotten on here i think more for more things i don't know what but <laughs> special moments there's no <laughs> that i don't know um but i did love that i did really like that movie so um and then the only other thing i was going to add was more of just a question and i think this is to the group because i think this is such a group of animated followers this animated best animated feature category seems terrible like it's it very weak. Is it's it very okay? weak. <laughs> it it is bad because it was a bad year for animation. If you I, uh, pick the one, so I want to throw this out there because I didn't like. I've seen everything on here, but Flea. If you're going to pick something on here, what do you pick to win? If I'm voting, or what do I think will win? Uh, both. I'll take both. I probably so here's a sign of how bad the slate is and and again it's just an extension of how bad the year was the film i would vote for for best animated feature would be the mitchells versus the machines right there a with film, you. a film about which i think my most like notable forward-facing opinion is that i had a dear friend scream at me for not liking it better so <laughs> so there we are because it 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 was a dog it was a dog of the year. It was a really bad year for animated films, period. And the nominations reflect that. I would probably pick Luca, not because I had any especial fondness for Luca, but because if it had just been those two little boys hanging out for 90 minutes without any of the 
bullshit story that came after they met, I would have given it five stars. So mm-hmm. like there is a right there with you. There is a beautiful movie hiding inside it that I don't think is the case for any of the others on the animated film slate that I have seen. Cause like Encanto was nice enough in the moment, but it's basically fundamentally broken. And I don't even remember the experience of Raya and the last dragon. Thanks. So I, I have, I have to speak nicely um, in case uh, my, my boys listen to this podcast ever, because uh, Aiden is a big <laughs> fan of both Raya and the last dragon and Encanto. Um, but man, uh, yeah, but man, I think they both stink so badly. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I really do. I I think Encanto is probably going to win, but I, who knows? I I would maybe vote for Flea because it's it's a. Fi- I mean, I think it's a unique concept. Um, but uh, yeah, either that or Mitchell versus the Machines are are the two best. But I wouldn't call either of those movies great, though. Yeah, I would neither. And I I'm sorry. Can I? I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, sorry. Um, no, I just want to follow quickly up on that specific thing you said, Chris. Um, I think Flea is the better film per se, but I think the animation is a specific shortcoming of the film. Yeah, it seemed to distract at times, right? Especially mm-hmm. when they were, um, I thought, uh, w- um, when they were the two of them speaking or when they were in the therapy together, that's that's when it, it seemed to take me out of it as opposed to immerse me more into Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Same exact yeah. experience. Yeah, I'm sorry, Rob. What were you going to say? Oh, no, I was going to say that uh, of these, I haven't seen Flea, so I can't comment on that. But the one that I had the most fun with uh, and have seen on multiple occasions now um, is Mitchell's versus the Machines. It's so, fine, but it yeah. just doesn't feel like no, it's again, not, an it's Oscar not of that, animated yeah, it's movie. It's not of it the typical ilk that you would normally like have. That. Yeah. yeah, it feels like a Hotel Transylvania, you know. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> That's harsh, but fair. Harsh, but fair. I'm okay <laughs> you are um i think that's gonna do it for us there's obviously so much more to say but i do hope to have both of you mandy and chris on pass popcorn a lot more and if you feel like you missed anything we can do a little little cleanup next time you're on um but in the meantime where can people find you out on the internet if you want them to like other than alternate if you want them to follow you on twitter or anything mandy do you want anyone to find you anywhere <laughs> I mean, I guess you can follow me on Twitter. It's not that exciting. Um, but uh, you can listen to my other podcast, which is about Star Trek Enterprise, everybody's favorite show. It's called At Least There's a Dog, and you can find it anywhere you listen to your fine podcasts. And I guess if you want, you can read my blog about teaching writing, but I, I don't think you really want to. Let's go back to that podcast. Let's- <laughs> At least there's, a dog. there's a dog. At least there's a dog. That's all. At awesome. least there's a dog because there's a dog in Star Trek Enterprise. And even when the episodes are really bad, which they frequently are, we can comfort <laughs> ourselves with the fact that there's a dog. Hell yeah. And there's that soothing <laughs> voice of your husband that is also on there that you mentioned yes. earlier. So you can also hear that as well. Indeed you can. Mm-hmm. And, and Chris, how about you? Where can people find you? Sure. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, uh, I do a lot of movie tweeting, sometimes talk about uh, how badly the Cubs, both the Cubs and the Packers disappoint me. And then I put my <laughs> occasional Wordle score up there as well, still undefeated. But uh, I'm at Chris Trengove. Uh, uh, right now, I'm also known as Ryosuke Hamaguchi's fan club member. Um, but you can also find me on Letterboxd to um, Chris Trengove. So if you want to follow me, feel free. They're tweeting yeah. way more than we are. So you should get out. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, and you can find me on Twitter at It's Raining Brands and Instagram at uh, The Burning Clem. Because that is when I told my name to somebody, that's what they wrote it down as one time. <laughs> um, and oh my God. Yeah, it was, it's my life is a journey and it was very exciting. <laughs> Your name's not even that hard to say. No, it's not. Just take the D out of Brendan. He'll be disappointed, but it'll be fine. Hey. <laughs> um, <laughs> I really, I look. I had to bring the Tim energy because Tim, you're very serious today because we're talking about the Oscars. So. I I was being turned on earlier, and and then I sort of got like poked at, so I stopped. <laughs> this is before we started recording. Oh, yes, of course. Um, but yes, and Rob, I, I mean, I need to practice doing the spiel, but uh, you got to teach me how to close out close out this podcast. Like, what? what's the spiel? 
Oh yeah. So yeah, find us on, thank you all for listening. Uh, you'll find us on Facebook. Uh, we'll find all our movie reviews podcasts and we're on alternending.com Twitter, where we're tweeting all the time, Instagram, where we're Instagramming all the time. Thanks to Brennan and all. Uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. We're going to be doing a top five next, actually uh, bride of AE is coming up on Friday. Is that right, Brennan? Yes, uh, presuming everything goes well on our recording, which has not happened yet, we will be discussing Poltergeist 3 on Friday. I might have to catch up with that one because that's one of my favorite ones. Yes, it is. It's a good one. And then our next top five episode that's coming then top the following five endings. week is top five endings, which what does that even mean? Who even really knows? We'll find out. Top five endings. <laughs> <laughs> we'll discuss. Well, thanks for hanging out, everyone. We will catch you next time.